Well, it changed my life. Uh, if, if, if I hadn't read that book in 19, late 1949, uh, I, I'd have had a different future. Uh, it, 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 it instantly clicked with me that what he was saying made sense. Uh, and then the chance to uh, study under him and and under Dave Dodd too. It, it was a different experience, but it was hugely helpful. Uh, it really it, it shaped my professional life. There's no question about it. Working farm was was uh, a, a sort of different experience because Walter and I were in a little office. Uh, ben was in another office. It was a tiny firm, five or so people, and. Almost anything that we knew what he was looking for, and so almost anything Walter and I would come up with, uh, he he would he would tell us go buy it. But but he but he also did, did it in very very small amounts. Uh, uh, I was much more inclined to if I found something good uh, to load up on it. And Ben 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 did, was not that he was really not that interested when we were at Graham Newman. I mean he, I didn't know it then, but he was getting close to retiring. Uh, Making money did not did not motivate him, uh, and uh, he, had, he had all the money he needed. And uh, I remember one time I was standing with him by the elevator. We were going we were going down to eat at the cafeteria in the bottom of the Channon Building, and he said, "I can still remember it." He said, "Warren," he said, "He said, don't don't worry too much about making money." He says, "It it, it won't change the way you, you you live." He says, "It'll change the way your wife lives." But <laughs> he said, "Our wives live differently." But he says, "Look at you and I are wearing the same clothes. We're going to eat in the same cafeteria. So relax." <laughs> Ben actually, uh, when I was working for him, uh, Scarsdale Adult School wanted Ben to teach a course, uh, a night course, and uh, Scar at Scarsdale High School. And, and Ben said, "Why don't you do this, Warren?" So I I went up and taught a class for eight or ten weeks, uh, uh, but uh, that was pr pretty much the extent of it. <laughs> Well, it wasn't what's going on in the market that week. Yeah, it was. It was. It was uh, looking at businesses, and 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 maybe he, he may have worked in some other arbitrage type situation. But it was all practical advice about current situations. And as we worked through those, you would presumably learn how to think about securities. Ben. Uh, was always thinking, by the time at least I knew him, as a passive investor, that, that, that you bought a little of everything. So he was widely diversified, which is not a style that I would uh, go for. And, and he really, he, he, wasn't, he wasn't driven uh, toward maximizing performance. Uh, uh, now bear in mind this was the last year or two of his professional investment management career. So uh, it may have been different earlier on, but he, he, he would, he would never get excited about an idea, but he would never throw cold water on it either. I would get excited. <laughs> and uh, he always felt that we shouldn't go out and talk to managements about the business because he felt that his books uh, were out there for people all over the country who would not have that opportunity. So he felt we ought to achieve our results in a way similar to what somebody who read the book could achieve them, and, and that we might be cheating a little if we if we worked a lot harder than that. I, I would have loved to go out more and, and see management. So so it was it was almost like we were running the fund uh, as as a few people who had read the book and who did not have the opportunity even to go visit management. So it was, the place was a little more passive and slower than I might have liked. And uh, but I was you know I was well by that time I was twenty three or twenty four, but I was. I was I was eager for a little more action. Well, like I say, he would put a little money in almost anything that, that I came up with, and uh, he was not looking at all for the great business. He was looking for he was looking for really medi mediocre to a little bit better than that businesses that were selling very very cheap, and it worked very well. Uh, but uh, and of course the irony is that. The, the shareholders of Graham Newland made their money out of uh, made more money out of Geico, which was then called Government Employees Insurance, which was the antithesis of the kind of company he normally uh, would invest in.
Well, I, I learned a, little, a lot of things about techniques of teaching. Uh, uh, but uh, then with this combination of being a wonderful friend to everybody, but always somewhat distant. I mean, he, he did not uh, want to sit, sit around a table and just shoot, you know, shoot the ball or anything of that sort. It was not his style. Uh, so uh, he would do things for you. My, my, my first son was born when I was, in, when I was working for him, and that we named him Howard Graham Buffett after my dad and, and after Ben. And Ben came over and Esty, his wife, and they had a, a movie projector, a camera, I mean, a fairly expensive type of, and he would always be doing that for you. And he, didn't, he, and he didn't want anything in return. He actually, on his birthdays, he would give gifts to the people that attended the birthday party because he figured he was the happy one. <laughs> he was, he once, once he, uh, my wife mentioned that I wasn't really too enthusiastic about dancing, and the next morning I found on my, on my desk at Graham Newman a gift certificate to the White Plains Arthur Murray studio. That's great. Did you go? <laughs> I didn't go, and then he asked me a few weeks later, he said, they tell me at Arthur Murray's that you haven't been there. <laughs>